Chamomile. Hello, dudes, dudettes, duders, and everyone in between, and welcome to How to Do Everything So You Don't Have To. I'm your host, Jesse Kester. Today, we're going to look at how to do Luma and Chroma keys in DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you're coming from Premiere, Resolve's tool sets might seem a little unintuitive, but once you learn how they all fit together, I think you'll find that Resolve is very powerful indeed. Let's get right into it so that you can get back to making amazing movies. We are in Resolve and we're working on this clip of a model who's showing off a dress. And what we want to do is reveal the logo of the boutique that is selling the dress. And we want to keep that behind her head. We could put it in front if we were lazy, but that looks tacky and we are nothing if not classy. So what we're going to do is remove that white background revealing the logo. And we're not going to use any video effects. We're going to do this all in the color tab. But before we go to the color tab, we are going to duplicate this clip and we will use that later. All right, let's get over to the color tab. In the color tab, you'll notice that we've got three nodes already built and these represent the correction that we've done to this image. This is the image with the correction turned on and that's with the correction turned off. Let's leave it on as we create a new serial node, and this is the node we're going to use to define our alpha output channel. We're gonna set those definitions by going over to the qualifier tab and selecting the picker tool, and we're going to draw a curve around the model's head. And what this is going to do is select all pixels that are of similar values to those that fell on that curve. You'll notice that the image has not changed at all. This is because we have selected pixels, but we haven't altered them. To see which pixels we've selected, go to the highlight tool, and all the ones that we've selected are in white, and the ones that were not included in that selection are now in black. Anything that's white will be retained, and anything that's black will be removed and this is just the opposite of what we want. We want to keep the model and remove the background. To do that, we go to the Qualifier tab and select Invert. Now the background is black and it will be removed, and the model is white and she will be retained. At this point, the tutorial that you're watching and the project that you're working on might deviate tremendously. We are doing a white wall extraction from behind a model, but you might be doing green screen or blue screen or low light extraction. While the tools remain the same, how you apply them could vary greatly from project to project. So we're going to go over the tools, but don't be surprised if yours is not a one-to-one -one recreation of what we're doing here. Let's get back into Resolve. So we've got a mat, but it's a pretty dirty mat right now, and we're going to clean it up by zooming in and seeing what needs to be improved. And you'll notice that there's a halo around the model's head. We need to get rid of that, and we're going to do that by going down to the hue, saturation, and luminance values and adjusting them. First thing I want to do is adjust hue, and as we increase the hue, you see that we chew away at that. Now we're just doing a white wall extraction, so we can actually turn off saturation. And now we're going to go back to the beginning of the clip and play it and watch for any possible blips or bloops. And we got a couple in there. You'll see that as we play it, there are little flickers of black on her face, and we need to chew away at those. What's going on there is that her eye shadow is very similar in color to the background. You can see that point in the eyeshadow there is similar to the background there. And we need to kind of hone in and exclude those values without chewing away at the white behind her. And we're gonna do that by adjusting the luminance. And as we tighten up the luminance, you'll see that that spot on her face disappears, but we start to introduce the shadow behind her into this image. So let's adjust the roll off and see if we can't tighten that up a little bit. And that's actually looking pretty good. So we're gonna go back to the beginning and we'll do some playback. Now that looks like a good mat. And at this point we can turn off highlight and we can go to the alpha channel. We're gonna build that alpha channel by going over to our node map and right clicking and adding an alpha output. Now all we have to do is connect the alpha output from our alpha channel to that little blue dot over there, and suddenly the logo appears behind her. Now that's looking pretty good up top, but you'll notice down below the roll off on her shadow is abysmal. We've got a really quick fix for that. Let's get back into the edit tab, and we are going to use that duplicate that we made earlier. We're gonna put it right on top of our extraction, and now you'll see there's the duplicate, and that's with it turned off. 
you can see that there's the logo, but when we turn on the duplicate, we can't see the logo anymore. Very simple, we're just going to crop the top. So now you're seeing the duplicate from here down and the extraction from here up. And that is not a very good line, so we're going to increase the softness of that cropping and maybe even kick that down a little more so that we can make it really soft. And now we've got a pretty good extraction. The dress is looking good, the model is looking good, the background is looking good, but there's a little bit of a halo. Let's go back to the color tab and clean that up. The first thing to do when you get to the color tab is to make sure that you are adjusting the alpha channel and not the layer on top. So make sure that the correct layer is selected and then make sure that the correct node is selected. Now we are going to zoom in and scroll up so that we can see how we're cleaning this up. And we're going to clean it up using the blur radius, the in and out ratio, the morph radius, and denoise. So let's start with the blur radius, and we're going to set that pretty soft. We're going to set it to 3. And you can see that has already cleaned up that white little halo we had. We're going to shrink that down a bit, and that's looking even better. But there's one problem. We've got little jaggies all along the edge, and we want to get that a little bit more clean. We're going to do that with denoise. We'll do a 0.5 denoise and maybe even boost the morph radius a little bit. Now when we play back, that is a fairly good extraction. Let's go back to our edit tab and just watch that. Extraction's looking good. Model's looking good. Dress is looking good. Logo's looking good. Let's call it a win before I mess this up. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about what we covered in this episode, please leave them in the comments below. Other than that, I really do think you should get back to making amazing movies. Thank you for watching. Bye.